Today I'm going to talk to you about G-protein coupled receptors. G-protein coupled receptors are metabotropic receptors. Metabotropic receptors are ones that use neurotransmitters as a ligand. This results in a cascade of intracellular effects caused by affecting signal pathways in the cell. Let's look at what the G-protein coupled receptor is composed of. First, you'll see here that I have drawn a plasma membrane with various proteins embedded into them. This yellow one is your receptor protein, which we are going to refer to as a receptor. Bound to this is your G protein. Your G protein is heterotrimeric. Heterotrimeric meaning that it has three parts. So as you can see here, there are three subunits. This green one is the alpha subunit, purple, beta, the blue one is your gamma subunit. Lastly, you have an effector protein, and this effector protein is what will ultimately affect those signal pathways. The mechanism we are going to discuss today is the G-alpha-S or G-S mechanism. The purpose of this mechanism is to stimulate adenylyl cyclase. Adenylyl cyclase plays an important role in the production of cyclic AMP, also known as CAMP. Let's first look into the activation of this process. Remember that since this is a metatotropic receptor, it is going to be affected by neurotransmitters. In this case, our neurotransmitter is epinephrine. So what's going to happen is epinephrine is going to come in and bind to this receptor, and by binding, it results in conformational changes within this receptor. This in turn allows the dissociation of your G protein from this receptor. In its inactive form, the alpha subunit of your G protein is bound to GDP. In its inactive form, the alpha subunit is bound to GDP. Thus, the next step is that GDP will be exchanged for GTP thereby activating the alpha subunit. Once activated, the alpha subunit will dissociate from the other subunits of the G protein. Next, the alpha subunit will bind to adenylyl cyclase. Now, if you'll note above, there is an effector protein involved in this mechanism and in this case, our effector protein is adenylyl cyclase. Once bound, adenylyl cyclase is stimulated. And once this occurs, the next important step in our process can occur. Adenylyl cyclase converts ATP to cyclic AMP. What role does cyclic AMP have in the cell? Cyclic AMP binds to protein kinase A. Protein kinase A is also known as PKA. PKA has two subunits. It has a regulatory subunit and it has a catalytic subunit. Cyclic AMP binds to this regulatory subunit. When this occurs, the catalytic subunit dissociates and goes onward to phosphorylate proteins within the cells. This form of post-translational modification results in a cascade of intracellular events. So what happens when we need to stop these intracellular events? What do we do? Well, the next step would be deactivation of this mechanism. Our first step in the deactivation process involves our alpha subunit. First, GTP is hydrolyzed forming GDP. Remember that in its inactive state, the alpha protein is carrying GDP. This means that we are inactivating the alpha subunit. Inactivation of the subunit means that the alpha subunit is going to dissociate from our adenylyl cyclase. Not only does it dissociate from adenylyl cyclase, it reassociates with the rest of the G protein subunits are beta and gamma 
subunit. Without the alpha subunit, adenine allele cyclase is deactivated. So this means that we are no longer converting ATP to cyclic AMP. However, that does not mean that there is no more cyclic AMP in the cell. Because adenine allele cyclase has already created a bunch of cyclic AMP, we need to find a way to mediate that effect. So although the production of cyclic AMP has decreased, we need to stop the phosphorylation of the proteins, which is ultimately causing the altered cell behavior. Fortunately, there is a protein called phosphodiesterase. What phosphodiesterase does is it destroys any remaining cyclic AMP in the cell. By hydrolyzing cyclic AMP, the regulatory unit reassociates with the catalytic unit of pKa. This means that the catalytic subunit is no longer phosphorylating those proteins. Remember, the phosphorylation of proteins is what results in that altered cell behavior. But what do you do about the proteins that are already phosphorylated? Fortunately, there is an enzyme called protein phosphatase, which takes care of that by dephosphorylating those proteins. Once those proteins are dephosphorylated, there are no more altered events in the cell. And this is how the G-alpha-S or G-S mechanism operates.